Saludamos ya a Margaret Atwood, que se encuentra en Toronto, en Canadá. Margaret, es un lujo, un placer enorme tenerte en el programa. Muchísimas gracias por atendernos. Eh, como sabes, se acaba de publicar, se acaba de completar aquí en España la publicación de tu última trilogía, Madadam, una distopía sobre cómo el progreso biotecnológico desbocado puede conducir a una enorme catástrofe. ¿Qué te empujó a embarcarte en este proyecto literario? Uh, early in the 21st century, I was in Australia and we were looking at some quite rare birds. And we were wondering how long they would continue to be on the planet. And from there we moved to how long would we human beings continue to be on the planet, considering the uh, two crises on the planet right now, which are um, the climate crises and species extinction, which, and the, the two are joined. So that's when I started to write this trilogy which um, takes place in a future in which the climate crisis has progressed but so has uh, human biotechnology and uh, when i was writing the first one we had not yet uh, we were working on it but we had not yet um, discovered how to grow human organs inside pigs Uh, but we, we now have done that. Um, so a number of the things that were theoretical when I was writing the trilogy are now actual, including the ability to make new viruses. ¿Qué te parece la gestión política y sanitaria que se está llevando a cabo a nivel global de esta pandemia? Nobody was prepared for that. We've been very lucky because... Uh, these vaccines, which normally would have taken, you know, really a lot of years to develop back in the, uh, they were done in a matter of, of months. I think on the whole, um, if you compare it to, for instance, the 1918-1919 flu, which was devastating, um, on the whole, compared to what previous um pandemic diseases like this have done, it hasn't been too, too bad. Or when young people say this is the worst thing that's ever happened, the answer is no, it isn't. <laughs> It's been much worse. El uso de la distopía te permite de alguna manera lanzar un SOS ante el temor, como decías antes, de que la Tierra, por ejemplo, deje de ser habitable o sobre otros asuntos como el auge de regímenes totalitarios. No sé si pesa mucho cargar con esa mochila de malos presagios. No creo que Si look at la historia de este tipo de literatura, el siglo XIX was full de utopías. So people were writing versions of the future and in which everything was a lot better. And they were doing that because the 19th century had made so many discoveries and improvements. Um, so, so people were very interested in writing books in which things were more equal. Poverty had been eradicated. But then along comes the 20th century. And we have, first of all, First World War, very devastating. And uh, we never actually got to the better for everybody part, because then along came World War II. So the interest in utopias went way down, and the interest in dystopias went way up. En 1985 se publicó tu novela más, más conocida, la más famosa, El cuento de la criada, un icono feminista. ¿Te sientes cómoda tú con esta etiqueta? So there's, there's 75 different kinds of feminism, at least. So when people ask me that question, I, I, I have to ask which kind. And the kind that I am uh, supporting most at the moment is an organization called Equality Now, which works on changing laws um, in many countries to make them more favorable to women and girls. Uh, but when you look back over the history of feminism, fem feminists all have one thing in common, and that is women are human beings. You know, it's pretty fundamental, uh, but it hasn't always been acknowledged. 
So you see fights for the vote. You see a push for higher education to be allowed. Uh, in, in the 19th century, women could not go to art schools because they might see naked women. <laughs> Shock. Um, so so each, each of these things is specific to its, its own time. En tus obras lo cierto es que siempre colocas a las mujeres en una posición de especial vulnerabilidad. ¿La igualdad de género crees que sigue siendo una utopía? No exactamente. So, so we've, we've been told by some kinds of people uh, that, that things have always been unequal. Uh, that, that happens not to be entirely true. Uh, for instance, even in, in uh, indigenous North American cultures, and a lot of the women had a lot more uh, political and decision-making power than, than we were told women um, had. Um, so I, I, think, I think part of it has been a, um, a reliance on European recent history as the norm. Um, but, but human beings have made other arrangements quite frequently. Um, so not a utopia. Um, I don't think it's, it's, it's unreasonable. Margaret, tú eres especialista en indagar el pasado para advertirnos luego de los posibles peligros del futuro. ¿Tú a qué te agarras para pensar que las cosas pueden salir bien? Well, um, first of all, human beings are very resourceful. They're very inventive. Um, so they can put that resourcefulness and invention to work. I'm um, doing a project right now called Practical Utopias. So in our project, um, we will get together in groups to make the best choices. But to answer your question, I wouldn't be thinking about it if I didn't have any uh, hope for the future. And I think that, that hope for the future is something that human beings come with. I think it's part of our, our toolkit as humans. Hope is necessary to build practical, realistic hope. Margaret, no solo eres una escritora brillante, eres también una de las más premiadas, de más éxito de nuestro tiempo y de alguna manera te has convertido en una intelectual a la que muchos recurrimos en busca de respuesta, como una suerte de visionaria. ¿Cómo lo llevas esto? Well, I'm not really. Um, I'm just very old. So um, it, it, looks, it looks as if I'm... Um, you know, able to see in the future, but, but that is just because I'm old. So uh, things that I, that I did, say, 40 years ago, um, now appear to have been visionary, but really I was just looking at the way things were unfolding and making, and making guesses. So I, I don't have a crystal ball, and um, there is no one the future. There are, there are many possibilities for futures, They depend on how we act now. Margaret Atwood, ha sido un auténtico privilegio conocerte y conversar contigo. Muchas gracias. It's lovely talking to you and good luck to all of us.